Not all insects are social like ants and bees, though. There are many species that get along just fine without living in groups. Butterflies are some of the most desirable insects to have around the backyard. With their large wingspans and striking colors, many people plant entire gardens just to attract these beautiful creatures. Like many insects, butterflies go through several stages of development before they're the colorful fluttering insects you see around flowers. It begins with the eggs. In roughly five days they hatch and out comes a caterpillar. The caterpillar will then spend all its time eating and growing. After a few weeks of this, the caterpillar sheds its skin and becomes a pupa. The hard outer shell the pupa is in is called the chrysalis. It's in here that the butterfly makes its most noticeable changes. After several weeks, the chrysalis cracks open and out comes the adult butterfly. The adult then mates and the process starts over when she lays eggs. Adult butterflies are most often seen around flowers, and that's because they feed on them. Well, I guess feed isn't really the right word. They drink from them. If you take a closer look at the adult butterfly, you will notice that there is no mouth parts capable of chewing or biting. All they have is this curly straw-like appendage. This highly specialized mouth part is used for extracting nectar from flowers. Adult butterflies lack the ability to eat solid food completely and must find all the nutrients they need through drinking. The time spent in this adult, non-eating form only lasts about as long as it takes to find a mate and lay eggs. Here we see two cabbage butterflies engaging in a courtship flight. The female will lay eggs not long after mating and then die off before the winter comes. The adult lifespan for most butterflies is only about two months. The exception to this, yeah there's always an exception, is the few species of butterfly that undergo lengthy migrations. Most notable is the monarch butterfly who flies hundreds of miles south in the fall to escape the cold weather. These migrating species enter into a non-reproductive state known as diapause and can live up to many times the normal lifespan of adult butterflies. Being able to fly, butterflies have the edge over many predators, but that doesn't mean they're totally safe. There are still many creatures that feed on butterflies, and so some species have developed pretty impressive means by which they protect themselves. This pipe vine swallowtail caterpillar, when disturbed, has two bright orange horn-like appendages that protrude from just behind its head when it feels threatened. These emit a foul-smelling chemical that wards off most predators. These horns become useless with time, though. This caterpillar develops a much more effective defense as it grows. As the caterpillar eats more and more of this toxic pipe vine plant, the toxins are retained in the caterpillar, making it a nasty treat to any predator that tries to snack on one. When the caterpillar changes into the adult pipe vine swallowtail, this toxic quality is retained, making this butterfly poisonous to any predator that tries to eat it. The monarch butterflies have a similar toxic quality from the milkweed their larvae feed on. So what about butterflies that don't feed on poisonous plants? Well, some species have developed very similar patterns and colors, effectively mimicking the poisonous species. The eastern black swallowtail looks very similar to the poisonous pipe vine swallowtail. Too similar for a hungry predator to risk eating. Butterflies are not desirable for their aesthetic quality alone. They're also pollinators of many plant species. Like the bees we saw, the hairs on the butterfly collect pollen and they then carry it around with them, transferring it to other flowers. Beautiful and functional, butterflies have become one of the most popular insects among people and will always have a place in my backyard. Moths are the nocturnal twin to butterflies. Usually coming out at night or at dusk, they're most often seen flying around lights. The life cycle of a moth is pretty much the same as a butterfly, going from egg to caterpillar to pupa to adult. This moth larvae is called a hornworm because of the horn it bears. Often seen on tomato plants, these are actually caterpillars and not related to worms at all. This species has a peculiar defense mechanism. It can generate an auditory threat when defending itself. Listen. Cool, huh? Once this guy gets big enough, he'll transform into a pupa and spend several weeks in this cocoon. You can still see the horn even when it's in its pupa stage. The adult moth that comes out is called the sphinx moth. Here's one relying on its amazing camouflage during the day to elude predators while it sleeps. Once the sun goes down, this guy will wake up and go in search of flowers to feed on. Although most moths are nocturnal, not all of them are. This diurnal species is one of the coolest insects I see around my backyard. A close relation of the sphinx moth, this is called the hummingbird moth, and you can easily see where it gets its name from. The flight pattern of this unusual moth is very similar to that of a hummingbird. Look how he hovers around these flowers looking for nectar. 
These guys are a common sight around this butterfly bush in the afternoon. Even though some moths are considered a nuisance because their larvae have the bad habit of feeding on clothing fabric, they're still a very important part of the ecosystem. Some flowers bloom at night and rely heavily on moth pollination. Any way you look at it, moths and butterflies are not only a delight to see, but are also insects with a very important role as pollinators. They truly are some of the most amazing animals to ever master flight. During midsummer, a strange phenomenon begins to happen in the backyard. At dusk, the air becomes full of this loud buzzing, and these bizarre insect shells start showing up all over the trees. Well, to find out who's responsible for all this noise and these shells, we have to go back to the night before. Just a little bit after sunset, we can find one of these elusive insects just coming out of its shell. This strange looking creature is called a cicada. Sometimes called a locust, these insects are actually not related to locusts at all. Cicadas are actually related to leafhoppers, like this red-banded leafhopper. The cicada life cycle is a wonder in itself. Some species have a life cycle that lasts 17 years, most of which is spent underground in the nymph stage. The nymphs feed on fluids in the tree roots and will only come above ground when they're ready to shed their skin and mate. The process you see going on here is the adult form coming out of the skin of the nymph. Once it climbs out and has a chance to dry off, the wings will harden and it will fly away. The next few weeks are critical. It has to find a mate and, if it's a female, lay eggs. Time is extremely short as most cicada adults only live for a short period, so they'll have to spend most of their time trying to find a mate. The loud buzzing call that's heard is produced by the males during this adult phase by vibrating the sound chambers located on their abdomen. It's hard to believe that all that noise can come from just a little movement in the abdomen. The adult cicada has a tube it can drink tree sap through, but finding a mate is at the top of the list, so feeding is often skipped. It's strange that they live for so long in the nymph stage, but the adult may only live for a week. This is one bizarre and interesting insect, sometimes coming in bright colors like this Costa Rican variety. The summer and fall around here just wouldn't be the same without these guys. So I think all the insects we've seen so far can fly. Even some of the ants had wings. Well, not all insects can simply fly away from their predators. Many rely on camouflage to hide themselves from unfriendly eyes. This insect here is a master of camouflage. Don't see him? Let's take a closer look. This strange looking thing is a walking stick. And wow, it really is what it is. A stick that can walk. Being this good at hiding, they're not seen very often despite how common they are. Looking at one, it's hard to imagine that it would ever need to defend itself with that amazing camouflage, but they actually have a very good set of defensive behaviors to back them up. Some play dead, some drop limbs to distract predators, and there are even some species that can squirt a vile substance at predators causing a burning sensation and temporary blindness. Whew, that makes them sound a bit scary. But they're actually very gentle creatures when not threatened. Strictly herbivores, this species here feeds mostly on oak trees and rose bushes. Walking sticks belong to an order of insects called Phasmida. That name is derived from the Greek word phasma, meaning phantom. It's no wonder they got this name. You could be looking right at one and never know. Walking sticks are a great example of everything that is awesome about insects. Every time you think you've seen the most bizarre looking thing, there's always something even crazier. Sometimes, hiding right in plain sight. 